Hey, peace, love, and light, my beautiful Scorpios. Welcome to First Star Visions. I am Q, and I am here to do the They Pray and Pray in the Downfall series. This reading is going to be a general reading. So that means eat the fish, spit out the bones. If it doesn't apply, let it fly by. This is also a timeless message. So whenever you find yourselves clicking on the video is exactly the divine time intended for you all to do so. For all of you who are new, welcome. My name is Q. I am a Scorpio. I also am Claire Audience. So I do incorporate music uh, into the reading. Those messages tend to correlate with the reading. Right now we have Immortal Technique playing Angels and Demons. And so I have Know Thyself and First Eye. So I feel like for many of you all, you have... Um, absolutely it's been revealed to you who the snakes are who the individuals were that you may have been very trusting of um that you put you probably should have had your guard up with these individuals i'm hearing frenemies i'm hearing snakes um i feel like you've learned something from these individuals and it taught you to trust your intuition trust what you see to trust what you feel when it comes to people you definitely started to protect yourselves i saw the black tourmaline card and that's my protection card so i feel like you really may have um protected yourselves by um perhaps setting a guard setting a boundary putting your guard up rather in setting a boundary um maybe you've cut these individuals out of your lives um, we have the visualization card just pop out as I'm shuffling. So I do feel like maybe some of you were receiving like messages via your dreams. Um, maybe there were some sort of downloads that were coming in for you. And we have angels and demons. So this was like spiritual warfare. Um, and I feel like your angels, your guides uh, could have potentially stepped up for you um, to help you spiritually guide you veer you away from certain individuals or point out certain things that you should pay attention to. So, um, and I do feel like for a lot of you, if you have not been uh, protecting yourselves by means of wearing like protective jewelry, evil eye bracelets, amulets, um, perhaps some of you all may need to uh, use like protective candles. I make protective candles. This is my evil eye candle. I also have another candle um, that's a protective candle. Uh, let me go ahead and show you that. Sorry about that. So we have um, my protective candle. And uh, these are all handcrafted by me. I don't know if you could see that. There we go. So this is my protection candle. Um, this is a very powerful protective, protective candle. And I also make the pillars here with the evil eye on them. Um, and this is uh, absolutely going to be in my shop, which will be launching very soon. I've been working very diligently, very hard to uh, restock my inventory. Um, I also feel, you know, that you all may need to do like spiritual baths, spiritual kits. Uh, absolutely smudge, burn your incense, burn your frankincense and myrrh. I sell that as well. Uh, but keep um, your guard up because you are dealing with some folks who could be like wearing a false mask. Um, and these are, you know, the name of this song is Angels and Demons. So I feel like you are amongst enemies, but they are uh, parading around and pretending to be friends. So they're in fact frenemies. But um, I digress. Let me go ahead and say my spill. And as soon as I cut the deck, look what we got here. Evil eyes. So you do have a lot of jealousy. You got folks watching you. You got people that are kind of like, um, I feel like these are snakes. People that watch you, study you, try to learn you. But they're also trying to block your blessings. They're uh, per Perhaps they're like trying to uh, defame your character, say things that are untrue. Um, but this is an energy of admiration. You know, your haters are nothing more than your fans you know they just want to you know they want to
take your spot so it's level of of, of toxicity in that regard but um, I do feel like a lot of you are connected to your higher selves and you already know who the snakes are you could see the snakes in the grass um, but let me say my spill I do call upon the elements of water fire earth air ether and spirit ashe I ask our beautiful angels archangels ancestors spirit guides deities animal totems earth Mother Gaia, universe, source, the divine, most high God, our creator to shine a powerful message of love and life for our beloved Scorpio. I call personally upon Baba Obatala, Mama Oya, to bless me with the intuition and discernment of my cards. I call upon Mama Yemenya, Mama Oshun, to bless me with the intuition and discernment of my cards. I call upon Baba Ogun, Baba Orula, Baba Alegua. And Baba Shango to bless me with the intuition and discernment of my cards. And I call also upon Archangel Mikael. Bless me with the intuition and discernment of my cards. Archangel Raphael. Bless me with the intuition and discernment of my cards. Archangel Gabriel. Bless me with the intuition and discernment of my cards. Archangel Uriel. Bless me with the intuition and discernment of my cards. As well as Archangel Metatron. To bless me with the intuition and the sun on my cards, and so it is. So more to be. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. So let's tap in tune and let's see what these messages are. I was about to cut the deck, and we got some runaways. So look at this. This is what you're dealing with. And the name of the song that's playing right now is We Have Joe Scott, I Keep Still Here. So someone is really frustrated. I'm feeling like there's a level of frustration because maybe someone has been trying very hard to destroy you, to break you, to tear you down, and they're watching you literally rise like the phoenix from the ashes. I feel like a lot of you have been durable. I'm hearing durable. Um, there's a sense of durability. There's a sense of strength. There's a sense of resist, uh, not resistance, but uh, persistence. Uh, persevering um, and resilience I feel these individuals have a lot of disdain um, jealousy envy these are people who are secret admirers but they hate what they can't duplicate so this is a very toxic energy I am also sensing that a lot of you may already be aware because I see here with the mantras, affirmations, gratitude, prayer, and Reiki, I am sensing that you all are in a, in a position where you are protecting yourselves, where you are calling on your angels. You're also receiving the signs and synchronicities of what to look out for, whom to look out for. You may already know who these individuals are that are hating on you. Um, this is spying. This is I spy. These are people who are, you know, sending you juju, voodoo. Um, words are spells and spells bind, so they could be wishing you harm. But with the song Jill Scott, I Keep Still Here, you all are persevering through whatever these haters, whatever these naysayers are sending out into the ethers to destroy you. It's almost as if whatever they're doing to destroy you is being used for your good. Like you're transmuting whatever negativity is being thrown at you and you're using it for good. So it's almost like you're re-funneling or re-channeling that energy uh, and that's being sent to you with hatred, with the intent to harm you, to cause you pain, to uh, see you suffer and your already aware because you're already tapped in um, you're already doing the healing you're already communicating with your guides your angels you're already in meditation you've already seen the snakes in the grass so it's all it's as if your 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 guard your boundary is unpenetrable and this could be causing someone to be very frustrated um, and we do have the synchronicity card so many of you received the download from your angels from your ancestors, from your higher selves, what to look out for. So let's see who's praying on your downfall and why. Divine Spirit of Loving Light. Who's praying on Scorpio's downfall and why? I just want to reshuffle those cards back into the deck. Who's praying on Scorpio's downfall and why? Divine Spirit of Loving Light. Let's go ahead, cut this deck. Who's praying on Scorpio's downfall and why? Beloved Spirit. 
So they're hating on your downfall because they see that you are divinely protected. They see that you have spiritual protection. The cardinal birds represent your ancestors in the spirit realm. So this is both masculine and feminine energy. If you find yourselves looking <clears throat> or stepping out of your home and bumping into red cardinal birds, then those are masculine energy. So that could be a father, that could be a sibling, an uncle, a cousin. If you step outside of your home and you see a brown cardinal bird, that is the feminine energy. So that could be a mother, grandmother, an aunt, a sibling. The cardinal birds is saying that you are divinely protected. I feel like your ancestors are spiritually guiding you and have been giving you the clues, giving you those downloads, those nudges, telling you to stay aware because maybe there were some things hidden in plain sight. Cardinal birds also represent messages. So you all were receiving, perhaps as I said earlier, like messages via your dreams. Maybe some of you are bumping into certain animal totems that would signify that there were some things for you to look out for or some some ex, uh, unexpected events that were about to unfold and you were prepared because you were paying attention to the signs and the synchronicities remember that synchronicity card fell out with the evil eye and mantras so i do feel like a lot of you have been praying and calling upon your angels and your guides and they have been there with you we have, have you ever loved somebody playing by Freddie Jackson? So I feel like it's someone that you did love that you discovered um, you had to pay closer attention to, so to speak, because, you know, perhaps this person broke your heart. The R&R &R represents rest and rejuvenate. It represents emotional withdrawal. And so I feel like with that mantras card, a lot of you took that time to ground yourselves, to heal to center yourselves, find emotional equilibrium and balance. And you were able to do so because you were paying attention to the messages that your, your spirit guides, your ancestors were sending you. This card also represents protection. So many of you were being protected from people's attacks, especially those evil eyes. You have a lot of spiritual protection around you. I feel that Scorpios, because you all have been through so much you really have a powerful spiritual team and it's because they've watched you literally work hard you've done your spiritual work your soul work you've healed you've learned to love yourselves and you've come out of a funk i feel like a lot of you have been breaking generational curses and have been cutting cords car karmic cords have been breaking your free yourselves free from illusion from the illusion of inclusion you know maybe a lot of you were you know disillusional about a partnership a relationship a friendship a family dynamic but with those evil eyes we see clearly that there is definitely some folks that were hating on you that you had in your inner circles and i feel like for many of you your ancestors were fully aware and they was letting you know and with the song have you ever loved somebody i feel like these were people that you love that you were very caring and supportive to but those things were not reciprocated back to you. Let me get a sip of my smoothie. So let's tap in tune and see who's praying and hating on Scorpio's downfall and why. So divine spirit of love and light, who is hating on Scorpio and praying on their downfall? So it's absolutely someone that you have released from you someone that you've purged the clean clear cleanse is someone that you've cut off people places and things I feel like it's also someone who sees that you know it's like they know that you see them they know you could see through their um, trickery from their lies and we have five minutes of funk playing by Houdini so I am definitely feeling and sensing that um, this was someone who would typically tend to ghost you with the name Houdini. So they would ghost you, they would be in and out, you know. It was almost like, kind of like in and out, playing the field. And this was all a ploy just to keep you stuck on them. So they would give you the bare minimums, spoon, you know, kind of like breadcrumb, you know, a little bit at a time just to keep you dangling on. But I feel like you completely clean cleared and cleansed yourself of this energy 
you you started to see things clearer, you know, and I feel like you started to like, you know, maybe there was some sort of, uh, as I said, karmic cord, or there was some sort of generational curse, a yoke that had you and this person kind of like almost bound to one another. And when you started to do your work, those those ties, those karmic cords, they began to disintegrate, they began to break down. Because the more that you started to do your work, that's why I was bringing up the protection because I do feel strongly with those evil eyes. There could be people working against you, trying to stop your growth or stunt your growth, to delay your blessings, block your blessings. I feel like someone has been trying to even steal your joy. And these were people that were secret haters, people that, you know, literally you had in your inner circle. And I feel like as you started to pay close attention to your guides, your angels, and to those messages, those spiritual downloads, that's what led you to realize um, that it was time for cleansing. Some of you all started to do spiritual baths. You started to purge yourselves with doing uh, egg baths egg cleanses, sea salt baths. I feel like a lot of you definitely learned who someone was. And we have on the bottom of the deck, remember you teach people how to treat you, be your authentic self. So for uh, many of you, I am sensing that, you know, some of you all were not delegating in the partnership as you should have. And so maybe this person, because they I was picking up, you know, because this is Houdini and a Houdini, you know, they disappear. So it's almost like, you know, <clears throat> magic, also emotional manipulation, excuse me, emotional, psychological manipulation, because, you know, Houdini is very magical. He could disappear. He's like an, an illusionist. And so I feel like you were dealing with someone who was like an illusionist, someone who was a, the magician. And I feel like when you finally made the decision to cut this person off indefinitely or completely, totally, that's when you started to see clearer what you were dealing with and who you were dealing with. I feel like for a lot of you, you were trapped in an illusion because, you know, a magician, they know how to emotionally manipulate. They know how to gaslight. And so I feel like for a lot of you, you discovered that, you know, you weren't being authentic. You weren't being true to yourselves. You are allowing someone to overpower you. You are allowing someone to mistreat you, to devalue you. And when you released that person, cut that person off, purged the people, places, and things, released what was no longer serving you, you were literally, you cleansed. You cleansed yourself, you revitalized your spirit, and you began to see very clearly who you were dealing with, and you also learned what your love language was. So let's tap and tune in. So who's praying on Scorpio's downfall and why? I feel like, you know, with this energy, it says, remember, you teach people how to treat you. So I feel like you ultimately said, this is not, this is no longer um, acceptable. You know, how someone was treating you, the little that they were giving you. I feel like you set your a boundary up with that person and you let them know it was no longer acceptable what they were doing or how they were treating you. And you set a boundary and you also set your guard or your standards higher. <clears throat> Give me a moment, my throat is very blocked. I feel like someone wants to say something. Someone definitely wants to say something to you, but they tend to get choked up. And I feel like it's because they know you could see through them now, you know, cause cardinal birds represent you know, cardinal birds teeter between the spiritual realm as well as the earthly realm. And so I feel like they see that you are seeing them from that bird's eye view. You have like that aerial view, so to, see, so to speak. So you could see very clearly what you were dealing with. You are no longer disillusional as to who you were dealing with, as to what was going on. It's like you have a sense of clarity, you're illuminated, and they know that. And so we have here, I Really Mean It, playing by Cameron and Jimmy Jones. And so someone may try to communicate with you and say, I really mean what I'm saying. But I feel like ultimately for you all, you already know to trust your intuition. 
to trust how you feel spiritually, like what you feel in your spirit when someone is around you. If your spirit clams up around people, that lets you know straight off the gate that that's not the type of energy you should be intertwining with. That's an energy vampire. That's a snake. But if you feel your energy is open and you feel the love, you feel the vibration and frequency of love, then perhaps that's an opportunity for you to sit down and have a dialogue as two adults and to work through some of the difficulties, to have a clean slate with this clean, clear cleanse. Have a clean slate. And that's only for a select few. The divine is telling me to make sure I point that out because I don't want to give anyone false hope because for most of the Scorpios, I'm feeling, I'm hearing the, the percentage, 98%. Y'all are off, you know, it, you're off of that wheel, you know. You've already, you know, you've come full circle and now you're in a whole new, you're in a whole new junction of your lives. And so someone may come and try to, you know, propose having a conversation and I feel like for a lot of you, you just got to trust your intuition and trust how you feel. So divine spirit, who's praying and hating on Scorpio's downfall and why? So it is feeling like someone is spying on you, watching you. This is someone who's admiring you from a distance or someone who can be spying on you and trying to study you from a distance. I also get the sense that if I see you, this speaks to the divine, noticing how hard you've been working to heal how hard you've been working to learn who you are so that you can show up as your authentic self, be your authentic self, stand in your power, stand your ground, communicate more effectively. I feel like for many of you, there was a fear of independence. I feel like many of you were in or trapped in codependency. And I feel like for some of you, this was technology. Maybe some of y'all were raised that way to believe like you need a man or you need a woman in the household. And if you don't have one, you're a failure. You know, maybe some of you were, didn't believe that you could survive without another partner because maybe your household bills just accumulated to, you know, these astronomical, astronomical numbers and you was just like how am I going to do this but I feel like for many of you that was just a fear that was a false expectation appearing real that was your ego I feel like you had to see yourselves powerful capable and as you started to believe your abilities you went after your dreams you didn't allow your fears to block you or to hinder you I also feel like someone else was projecting their fears, their insecurities onto you, which made you feel insecure, which made you feel self-conscious, devalued. This person's watching your evolution, watching you break free from not only the mental chains, the psychological chains, but also the emotional traumas that you carried around. Because fear is a learned behavior. So as I said, a lot of these behaviors that you were exhibiting in these partnerships were rooted in your childhood. And that root reference represents the root chakra, the base chakra which is ruled by Scorpios. And we have Tidra Moses get free. And so as you all started to heal, you had to confront and address the root cause of the issue, which was your childhood traumas, abandonment issues, mommy, daddy issues, familial issues, breaking free from some of the faulty belief systems or the misunderstandings of financial literacy, those all have and play a major part in our ability to sustain or establish 
our you know our stability or success or security for ourselves if you grew up in a household where the funds were scarce then of course when you get in relationships you're going to cling to your partner to survive because you're going to feel like you're unable to survive without them and i feel like for the most part that's what you all were breaking free from was this this mind fuckery this trap i feel like for this fear you all confronted that fear and this person is watching you literally break free from these generational curses, from these faulty belief systems, from these behaviors which hindered you, held you black, back. I also feel like someone is watching you and they have a fear of approaching you. Because perhaps maybe this is someone that you have already broken free from. We have get free. Maybe someone is potentially in another relationship this could be someone that you haven't even met yet who's breaking free from a partnership but watching you from a distance this could be an acquaintance an old friend it's not the ex but someone is watching and they're trying to clear whatever karmic cycle they have up as well and i feel like their fears may have prevented them from confessing or expressing their feelings, formulating their words in a way to let you know how they feel. But this is someone who studies you, watches you. We did have, you know, the evil eyes. So maybe someone who's in a partnership, maybe their person has learned about someone's attraction towards you. And so now you may have other people watching you and you don't even know. But let's tap and tune in. This is just the energy I'm picking up. And that's for a select few, not everybody. So who's praying on Scorpio's downfall and why? So the ones that are face down, I'm not going to take. But the ones that are face up, we will. So what did I say? You all, when you start working on yourselves, you love yourselves, you heal yourselves, you begin to know thyself. That was the card that showed up in the beginning of the reading is know thyself. And this healer shaman light worker card is telling me that you all have discovered that you are in fact healers, that you have healing abilities. You could be sages, you could be shamans, you could be, you know, Reiki healers. Remember that mantra card and the Reiki healing card showed up. So I feel for many of you all, you become a healer when you first heal yourselves. When you first apply your own healing hands to yourself to to remove the pain and we have matter of time playing by Kim and I feel like it was a matter of time before you all realized and discovered that you know you actually have some powerful gifts and you started to tap into those gifts psychic abilities out the wazoo many of you are very tapped in tuned in and I feel like that's exactly why this I see you card is here because you started to see who you were dealing with. Someone knows they can't get away with anything when it comes to you. And that could have been why there was this fear. Because when someone who's hiding things knows that they're dealing with someone who can see through them, they're not going to, there's, there's no chance at them getting away with what they're trying to get away with. That's almost like the equivalent to trying to lie to your grandmother who can see right through your eyes. You may have caught someone in multiple lies. You would ask them a question and then they would haunt you. And it's like my grandmother always would say, if you could haunt, you could hear. And so that haunt is just someone giving, you know, trying to uh, get an opportunity to think of something to say. If you're speaking the truth, you don't have to think about something to say if you're giving an honest response. And so I feel like for a lot of you, you realize that you were psychic. Some of you could be clairaudient, clairvoyant, but you're definitely tapped into a higher power. And I feel like you started to see, as I said, everything from this aerial view, from this bird's eye view. I feel like in a matter of time, you may see something or something's going to happen because we have the illusions, delusions, faulty foundation card come out. And this is the tower card in my deck. 
So there's going to be, and I'm hearing explosive um, by Nate Dog Snoop. So something's going to be explosive and we all know that the tower tends to burn down to the ground. So this is going to be some unexpected or shocking news. And I feel like, you know, it, it, it's definitely going to free you because you remember you had um, you had Tedra Moses and it said get free. So I feel like this will be the straw that broke the camel's back or this will be that final nail in the coffin. The death. I'm thinking of the death card. That's your energy, Scorpios. But whoever tried to have you or keep you trapped in some sort of illusion or keep you trapped in some sort of uh, confusion or third party scenario or lies, you know, whatever lies, whatever deception, it's going to all come to light. And it's a matter of time, according to Kim. It's a matter of time. And someone knows this. And I feel like it didn't happen to you, it happened for you. Because it was time for you all to truly break free from a partnership that was more so like, you know, it was energy vampirism. It was like you was dealing with a leech. You was dealing with someone who was feeding off of your energy. And it was only a matter of time that all of this would come to light. It's like you could, you could sweep but so much shit under the rug. You could lie but for so long. There's going to come a point in time where you're going to forget the lie that you told. You're going to forget what you said. Some of y'all would try to have dialogue with people and they would just like run away from simple conversation. And it was because they didn't remember what lie they told you. And so they would just create all of this drama and tension and arguing just so that you all couldn't sit down and have a dialogue. But it's a matter of time before everything that was hidden comes to light. Mercury retrograde brings out the truth. It brings people from the past. It also brings up residual energy, things that you thought were done, feelings you thought you were over. They come back to surface. They resurface. But I also feel like the divine is reminding you to pay attention to your higher self, like to, to pay attention to people's actions, to let your higher self, let your intuition truly assess the situation but there's an ending of something and we have Najee playing bet you don't know and they say bet you don't okay so this is what the lyrics are bet you don't know what's going on she don't love you like I do so <clears throat> I feel like there's going to be some sort of explosive information coming out about a third party. And the she could be a he, switch the roles, switch the gender. Gender is, you know, it's all, you know, you just switch it up. I don't know your personal stories, but, so with this Illusions Delusion Faulty Foundation and this song, Bet You Don't Know, and She Don't Love You Like I Do coming out, you're gonna find out about a third party. And the she could be a he, fellas. So you're gonna find out about somebody and the divine is telling you, look, this happened for your good. Trust this process. And I'm hearing it's time to clean house. Remember, get free. Many of you all have been trapped in relationships that were not serving your highest good. You was dealing with somebody who was literally using you for what you could provide. There was no love involved in those partnerships. And the divine is like, look, if you ain't going to break this shit up, then let me go ahead and burn down this damn house. I'm going to do you the solid. And this is only for some of y'all who is just like holding on for dear life to nothing. You know, it's almost like that movie Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Her ass looked like a whole fool the first five minutes of the movie. I was so perturbed. She's literally dragging on this man's legs. He's dragging her around the house and she holding on to his legs and being kicked. Oh, my God. That was like the worst. Tyler Perry's movies are just so disturbing. I'm sorry. But I digress because it's just like people just be doing doing the most. It's just like you come on. But, you know, I feel like there's going to be a tower moment and you're going to find out 
Scorpios about some things. But this is going to free you. So let's see who's praying on Scorpios downfall and why. Let's get one more message, Divine Spirit of Love and Light. Let's get one more message. Who's praying on Scorpios downfall and why? Who's praying on Scorpios downfall and why? Divine Spirit of Love and Light. Who's praying? Thank you so much. Okay. So we have heal that self. And then we have whatever isn't growing is dead. So this immediately lets me know that you all have already done this work. You already have discovered some sort of lies, some sort of, you know, and maybe I feel for a lot of you, there's going to be more details that come out because for most of y'all, you already know this stuff I'm telling you. It's just, you're just watching this for confirmation. But I feel like there's more details that you aren't aware of and those things may come to light and it will be shocking and it will be hurtful but you shall you know the strong shall survive and you have already overcome a lot of you know a lot of the drama that you were faced with in the beginning but i do feel like you're focused on healing yourselves you're focused on you know taking care of you and I feel like it's because you've realized that, you know, you were watering and nurturing and trying to cultivate a partnership with someone who wasn't even putting in the work. They weren't even doing the bare minimums. They weren't giving you anything to work with. And I feel like that's the revelation that you all have had. And you're going to realize the reason why this person wasn't nurturing the partnership with you is because they was already with somebody else. That's why she's saying, bet you don't know. So you, some of y'all may hear from the mistress. Some of y'all may hear from the other guy. And they're doing this because they can feel sense that your person still has feelings for you. And they just want to ensure that they don't have nothing to go back to. Because maybe they feel your person's pulling from them, pulling away from them emotionally. And so what they're trying to do is burn the bridge between you and your ex or you and your person so that they don't have nobody to go to, you know, so that they cannot return so that they can just stay with them. And that's for a select few. Also, I don't know where that came from. But for the most part, y'all have already been separated. You've already ended the partnership. You've already made the decision to move on with your lives. Y'all have not been in a relationship. Some of y'all are going through divorce proceedings live in two separate homes maybe in two separate states or in two different towns but i do feel like there's going to be some new information that comes to light but i feel like you've already walked away from this partnership you've already set you know set up your guard you've already put your boundaries up because i feel like there was this you know repeating cycle with this person and that's why this illusions delusions is here because something was being hidden in plain sight. You weren't paying attention to the red flags. And I feel like it's because you were truly loving and nurturing, but to a fault. You were over, you know, self -sac um, sabotaging, self sacrificing. And you were not delegating. You weren't, you know, holding this person accountable for doing their part. You weren't, you weren't making this person do what they needed to do to reciprocate and so we have boogie down productions necessary and so you took some necessary time to step away from this relationship remember the emotional withdrawal reference in the beginning and so that's exactly what emotional withdrawal is is you know when you take the time this is my re-re card rest and rejuvenate rest and recalibrate rest and recuperate rest and revitalize but I feel like this also is the time for grounding, coming into one's higher self, coming into balance, into harmony, because you are now assessing things more critically. You're doing that introspective work. And so you took the necessary time, perhaps away from someone, you could have cut them off and created that space, as I said here, with the clean, clear cleanse. And you could have purged this person, completely released them because you started to see what this person's motives were that they were only dealing with you perhaps for security for a roof over their head and even for emotional support emotional 
uh, contentment. Because a lot of you did love someone. A lot of you did put your whole heart into a partnership. When you said your vows for some of you, you meant that. You know? But unfortunately, when you're in a relationship, it requires more than one person to mean it. And so as I said, you all found balance. This is what's on the bottom of the deck of the, uh, the next deck that I will be using. So you absolutely did your soul work. Of, you absolutely um, went into that hermit mode. You know, the hermit is a wizard. So the hermit knows that the answers he's seeking are found within. And I feel like you've discovered the answers. And the answer was to keep it moving because someone wasn't about shit. You realized that there was a lot going on behind your back. You had the wool pulled over your eyes. You were wearing rose-colored glasses in this relationship because you were being optimistic. You was hoping for the best. Even though everything around you, all of the signs, was telling you that there's something wrong. You can't water a dead, you know, a, a, a dead plants. They're already dead. And you damn sure can't, you know, breathe life into a corpse. So this partnership was over and I feel like that was what you had to come to grips with. And I feel like someone could be trying to return because we have keep it moving. They ain't about shit. So someone could potentially be trying to come back and, and, and trap you into, you know, this mind fuckery, this, this illusion again. You know, because this is, as I said, this is an illusionist. This is the magician. This is someone who is like... They're very crafty. They're very trick. You know, it's like a trickster, if you will. And they'll do anything to get what they want. They want to win at all costs. They are very narcissistic, very vain, very superficial. And toxic as hell. Liars, deceivers. And that's why you had so many cards kind of just like urging you to, to pay attention. You know? Pay attention closer attention and a lot of you have healing from this because y'all could have been going through this mind fuckery for like 20 years you know how debilitating that is to deal with someone who is a narcissist a master manipulator for 20 plus years someone who just talks in circles and you feel like you going crazy that's projection they know exactly what they're doing they do that intentionally what did I say? Toxic behavior. This person was toxic as hell. And they did a lot of projecting. And I feel like by you healing yourselves, you became a healer shaman and a light worker. Because you really had to go through some really, go through some dark times and go into some dark places to really find yourselves, to find your way out of a connection that was really bad. So let's tap and tune in. Who is this praying on Scorpio's downfall and why? Yeah, they know you're rare. And that's why they were trying to, you know, keep their, their grips in you. Like, they don't want nobody else to have you. What did I say? This was an attention whore. This is someone very vain and very superficial. Someone who thrives off of attention feels validated by attention so they may have women everywhere you know what i'm saying i'm uh, the song by ludicrous holes and every zip code is coming to me so this is someone who you know had holes in every zip code maybe somebody you know wanted some of these feminines you know probably had a sugar daddy in every zip code little did you know people was doing the most for money you know just very superficial that superficial is someone who's very materialistic or someone who's very like surface level it's like as long as you look good on the outside that's all that matters if you got a fat ass cute face you know what i'm saying then that's all that some of these brothers care for that's all they looking for they ain't looking for the sister that has you know some some something to add on in terms of a conversation they just want something to look good on their arm. That's superficial. Something they can bang out, take to a hotel, buy them a meal, get their hair done, and it just makes them feel good and validated because they got this pretty thing on their arm. But you ask her to, you know, say her ABC, she don't know. She get tripped up. 
<laughs> I'm serious. Or for some of you ladies, y'all just steady choosing the guy with the car, choosing the guy with the BMW. But you ain't asking how they're making their bread, their cheese, their cheddar, their dough. All you care about is they're peeling off something out of that wad of cash. Potentially putting yourself in danger because you riding around in a vehicle that's hot as hell. Don't know they got 50 pounds of some, some illegal business in the back trunk. But because he driving around in, in, in the most current, you know, it's like, I don't care. It's like, nah, man, the superficial shit gets you caught up. I just read a story or heard a story about some IG model that was killed by her sugar daddy, you know, and it's unfortunate. But it's like what you pay attention to, you feed it. It's like, you know, so if you're paying attention to the things that don't matter, the more you pay attention to it, it grows and it grows and it grows. So when you're superficial and you feel validated by the attention of other people, that may grow and feed and inflate your ego. But what is it doing for you at a soul level? You're growing more out of touch, out of reality. And you're more spaced out and in La La Land and the things that actually matter. It's like topsy-turvy. And so that's what you was dealing with. Somebody who was like, it was like a high to be able to, you know, have all of these different people that they can bounce around or juggle around. And I feel like it was fun until it wasn't. Many of you, instead of focusing on this superficial shit, you focused on your coins. You said, um... I'm going to grow my finances. I'm going to make sure that I'm stable. I'm secure. I'm self-sufficient. I'm independent. And that's what they're hating. Because they're watching you focus on your coins and they're growing. They're watching you invest in businesses and you're get, it's thriving now. These are people trying to study you, trying to learn you. Some of y'all got like five or six haters out there. This is friends and family. These are people that you have cut off. You've cut these individuals off because that's why they're resorting to spying. That's why they're watching you, maybe online. And we have only you. So this person knows that, like, you're unique because if you're, it's only you, you know, only you. Perhaps maybe some of y'all cut a crazy ex off and it's like they on some shit like, yo, even though we ain't together, ain't nobody going to have you. This is some psychotic mess. So they watch you and they don't want anybody else to be able to snatch you up. They see that your money is looking good. They see that you're able to, you know, survive without them. In fact, you're doing much better off without them. But you made a decision to move on and you chose yourselves. Enough of no love. I know what I my worth now. Bye. This is you chucking up them deuces because you already saw that this shit wasn't going nowhere. It was dead, stinking and buried. You know what I'm saying? They was already ghosting you. They was already whining and dining other people. They was already lies and, you know what I'm saying, all kind of delusions. The connection you was building with this person, it was built on a faulty foundation because this person was wearing a mask the whole time. You was sleeping with the enemy for a lot of you all. You were sleeping with the whole enemy. But then you woke up. Some of y'all got a download from your angels, your ancestors, because they was watching the whole thing. They were seeing all of this unfold and they kept throwing you sign after sign after sign until finally you caught it. You caught on. And that's when you was like, ah, mother, uh-uh. I see you. I see your ass now. <laughs> it was like, I see your stinking ass now. You want somebody that's going to speak your love language. This person absolutely didn't even scratch the surface with that. You all are emotional beings. So you need someone who's emotionally intelligent. You don't have time for people who have issues communicating or expressing their feelings or being vulnerable. I'm not saying you want some man to just be crying and, you know, in your, in your lap every night. But you do want someone who's in touch with their feelings enough to express how they're feeling, what they're feeling, so that y'all can have healthy dialogue and communicate and you know, talk through some of those difficulties. But when you just dealing with somebody who thinks their presence is enough, even a female, if you just got a female who's so disconnected from emotions, who thinks that everything revolves around her, 
who feels like you're supposed to just kiss the ground she walks on because she exists, that's, that's not healthy. You want someone that's able to understand what they're supposed to bring to the table to balance the connection out, to be able to compromise, to be able to communicate effectively. So let's get the message here. So make your next move your, de your, your best move. So this is speaking to repeating cycles. You've been on this emo emo emotional roller coaster ride and that's what you started to do. You paid attention to the signs that your angels and your ancestors were giving you because a lot of y'all was going around and around in circles with somebody because they was talking your ass or in circles. They was literally gaslighting you and this was purposely. It was like you was a target, you know. They were targeting you. This is emotional manipulation. This is psychological manipulation. This is also someone being deceptive intentionally. And I feel like for many of you started to look at things from that bird's eye view. And you started to make the necessary steps. We have um, That's Hard by Sean P. and Styles P. And so, you know, it was a hard process. It definitely wasn't easy. <clears throat> because as I said, excuse me, you know, a lot of you could have been in this partnership or in this relationship and invested. It was obvious you was planting seeds and roots because you lived together. The tower can't come down unless you all are, you know, cohabitating. But I feel like with this energy here, with the cardinal birds, there was a lot of messages, you know, a lot of nudges by your ancestors and your angels and your guides. And they was telling you to pay attention. And they were telling you to assess, you know, to assess things more logically, to get out of your feels and to get into your, into your, um, into that, um, into that logic, into that space of logic. And you did just that. And I feel like, you know, regardless of how hard it was, Love you, Donnie. Regardless of how hard it was, you, you were able to do it. You were able to get through. See this person? They're going to try to come back and talk your ass back into circles. Because we have that's hard. So for some of y'all, y'all going to act like you, you know, like you stuck on stupid. And remember what I said, you know, the past comes back around during Mercury retrograde, which will be in the latter part of this month. This is going around and around in circles. This is repeating cycles. And this is like you're, you're stuck in a maze in a trap when you're not when you're not assessing things from a bird's eye view, when you're not looking at things from a different angle. And so the divine is forewarning you because someone's going to come back and give you lip surface, try to gaslight you, try to play on your emotions even. But I feel like for the most part, many of my Scorpios are already hip to that. And you ain't falling for the okie doke. You ain't going to get bamboozled. You ain't going to get duped. And you ain't going to get played for boo-boo the fool again. And so many of y'all are going to be like, yeah, sounds good, but whatever. Because the actions, beloved, you're checking their actions. You're not, you don't care about words. Y'all are not getting all excited and, you know, bedazzled by somebody's words. You know? Divine spirit of love and light. Why is this clean, clear cleanse here for who's praying on Scorpio's downfall? And why? Why is clean, clear cleanse here? Okay, so those all came out. So someone's fear and rejection, wanting to return, wanting to apologize, wanting to, you know, ask for forgiveness perhaps. They're fear and rejection because as I said, they already know you are on to them. They know they can't pull nothing past you. They can't put nothing past you anymore because you've already seen them for who they were. Once someone is exposed, it's like you can do your best to try to clean it up, but we already see you for who you truly are. And I feel like that's the case here. You see someone for who they truly are, and it's because you finally cut yourself free from whatever yoke, from whatever spell, whatever control, whatever mind fuckery, whatever tricknology, whatever gaslighting, whatever manipulation, you freed yourself from it when you clean, clear, cleanse. Many of you took those spiritual baths that I've been urging you to take. Many of you all cleared your mind by simply getting outside and walking in nature. Many of you did some release ceremonies during that last full moon where you wrote your feelings out and burned them. Everything you couldn't say or communicate to this person 
face to face you wrote it out and you burned it and you released it and now there's this sense of being you know free and we have just another day here playing so I feel like for this person every day they think of you every day they get up and their routine is to tune into your channel so to speak tune into Scorpio's channel they go to every single one of your social media sites. Some of them be browsing well into the early part, you know, early a.m. hours. You know, that's why some of them be like. Some of them be like. Um, just appearing in your dreams, you know, because they are thinking about you so much, especially during those witching hours. Some of them could be like spying in on you, aerial, you know, that remote viewing but we have happy house here. So I'm, I'm seeing what, you know, you, you had to clean house. This person definitely realizes like, you know, what they had with you, it, they, they were happiest with you, but you had to clean house because this person was absolutely like taking you for granted, taking what they had for granted. They realized that they lost a good thing because now they're feeling stupid and they're feeling stupid because they was playing a lot of games they was being fake they was being fugazi i also feel like if this person comes back talking all this sorry shit the divine is telling you to you know you could accept an apology but you don't have to accept them back in your life take them back get back in a relationship i feel like this person this is a part of their karma they're gonna have to you know go through their life lessons the same way that you did that's why the divine was reminding you that it didn't happen to you, it happened for you. And once you start cutting karmic cords, you can't repeat the cycles again because then you get right back on this emotion, ro emotional roller coaster ride, which will have you trapped in, in, in a space of confusion again, a space of illusion again. I feel like a lot of you all, you focused on your happiness. You're looking for someone that's desiring exactly what you desire. You want someone that's going to speak the same love language, someone articulate enough, intelligent enough, emotionally, that doesn't have a problem being vulnerable for the men and the feminine energy. And you also are going to see through the illusion that someone that you was dealing with, you know, was absolutely a fraud with that Fugazi card talking because they have lips she was absolutely dealing with someone who just talked because they had lips they talked out of both sides of their mouth they didn't mean a damn thing they said half the time most of the time they forgot what they said that's why they would haunt you when you would say you know what i'm saying when you would ask them a question they would try to avoid answering questions they would try to avoid having conversations and dialogue because they lied so easily and then not only that they started to resort to trying to defame your character trying to get other people to turn against you gossiping on you lying about you saying things that they knew were not true and that's why i feel like this person is going to receive their karma and so we have erica badu playing you don't have to call so somebody you know may try to call you get in contact with you and you you you're quite fine not hearing from this person you're not you're not bothered either way hearing from them or not that's why you cut their ass off in the first place because it's like, why you want to talk to somebody that you know is a pathological liar? What is there to discuss? And that's why I feel like with this illusions and then, the, you know, there's going to be something that comes to light. But maybe this is that karmic. Maybe somebody karmic is going to get a hold of your number and call you. And you're going to be like, you don't have to call me with this bullshit. I already know what was going on. If you know about me, then that means you knew your ass was creeping on the sideline. You getting some karma too, beloved. But at the end of the day, look at this. Your biggest fans are up seething at your ascension. And remember the evil eyes that you had there lurking. So you are being spied on. You're being watched. And we're about to clarify the I see you card. So this is someone, like I said, I feel like these individuals be tuning into your channel, Scorpios. So some of y'all who like to let everybody know what you got going on, you might need to stop that. Y'all need to like block all of your social media sites and shut it down. Because somebody's studying you, somebody's watching you, somebody's taking some of your photos and doing all type of witchcraft and voodoo, hoodoo, juju. And they're jealous of you. And I do feel like, you know, this could be a karmic because it says you don't have to call. I also feel like a lot of you all 
you know, are um, seeing someone's intentions, you know, like you're seeing through some sort of illusion. Maybe somebody's coming off, trying to come off all cool. They might call you, you know, act like they're checking in. But what they're really trying to do is check your temperature. They're trying to like psychoanalyze you. But they're really in secret competitions. So don't share anything because they're fishing. They're fishing for information because you've already cut them off. You're not communicating with them regularly. For some of y'all, this could be like your ex-husband or someone who could be the father or the mother to your child. So you have to, you know, have conversations. But I feel like, you know, this person is literally like in some secret sick competition with you. And they just won't let you go. But I feel like you already see them. You know them for who they are. And we have... Um, who is this? And it says prophecy. And so with this prophecy here... This is powerful. Because it's like prophecy is like you've already... You already saw it coming. And then we have I see you. So when you're prophesizing, that means that you're like, you're able to almost like see into the future. You're able to see someone's actions. You can predict something that's going to take place. So definitely, um, this actually, the name of the song is in prophecy. Just when it downloaded, that's what it was called. But this is actually called um, Notion. And this is by Tosh Sultana. So notion. And so, yeah, you, you absolutely got the notion that something wasn't right. And you already, you know, you got, you, you got a leg up on this individual because they don't even know that you see them. They don't. Need, well, they do know. They know you see them. But I do feel like they're going to be very persistent in, in trying to continue to dupe you or bamboozle you. But you aren't. You definitely are no. You're not aloof to what's going on. So why is I see you here and for who's praying on Scorpio's downfall? See that? You were receiving the uh, downloads from spirit. So remember the cardinal birds, they was giving you those little nudges, spiritually guiding you to pay attention. Some of you all may be seeing a lot of number synchronicities and you're looking up the meanings of those numbers and it's right on time. It's resonating with your situation, your circumstance. Somebody's actions was almost like predictable. I also feel like the ancestors are sending you signs to let you know that they see the work that you're putting in. They see how hard you've been working to heal, to become a better person, and you will be rewarded shortly. You will be rewarded for all of your hard work because your angels and your guides see you. And I feel like for many of you, you already know something great is coming because you're having a lot of these synchronistic acts. A lot of the time when people are on their spiritual journey, those are one of the clear signs that you're on the right path is when you start, you know, because that's one of the first um, signs that you're on a spiritual awakening or that you're in spiritual alignment, so to speak, is when you start, you know, noticing the synchronicities in the times or you may just happen to drive by and see someone's license plate and it's synchronized number or you may see uh, certain animal totems that show up. Um, but these are signs that your guides are showing you that they're with you, they're protecting you. And in most situations, they were carrying you. You know, when you felt weak, when you didn't feel as strong or capable, they were carrying you. And when you didn't have nothing else to lean on, you leaned on your strength because you were seeing these signs and it gave you the hope. And you knew that there was some sort of, you know, there was some, there was a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. You knew something was going to come of this situation. You didn't completely give up or give in to this person because you paid attention to what your angels and guides were instruct instructing you to do. But this is like that ace of pentacles. This is like, you know, wish fulfillment. The divine is assuring you that there is abundance coming in, stability, happiness, joy, peace, success, emotional contentment, security, stability. And I feel like the divine is letting you know, like, look, I see the hard work. I see what you've been going through. So you needn't, you know, you needn't fret, excuse me. You needn't fret, just stay the course. And many of you are discovering, you know, your soul's mission, discovering what your purpose is, discovering that you are healers. 
And some of y'all could be using your gifts to heal. Some of y'all could be Reiki healers. Some of y'all could be singers, songwriters. You write songs that are high vibration. You make music. Some of you play instruments. Some of you have singing bowls and you use sound therapy. But for many of you, you're tapping into your spiritual gifts. You're tapping into some sort of spirituality. And I feel like that's why, you know, the divine is assuring you that there is some sort of reward here. So divine spirit, who's praying on Scorpio's downfall and why? And somebody can sense, they, they know that you have some sort of wish fulfillment coming in because they see the change. They could see your transformation. They already feel like you cut them off. And now they're feeling, you know, um, they're feeling abandoned by you. But look at this. This is what you healed from. We're clarifying healer, shaman, light worker. So you had to do the work. You had to heal from this person who, you know, was very um, superficial, very dishonest. You stopped focusing on them and focused on your stability, your security. You had your mind on your money and your money on your mind. Cash ruled everything around. Cream, get the money. Dollar, dollar bill, y'all. Maybe some of y'all was dealing with someone who was superficial and thought everything was about money. Maybe they were money motivated. Money isn't everything. Money is an energy, though. Money is an energy. So what you put into that, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like for a lot of you, you just naturally attract the coins. Because you work hard for it. You don't have to do so much to get it. Because you, you literally, you're, you're in the vibration to receive. You're not cutting nobody's throat. You ain't doing no, you know, backwards shit. You ain't, you know, cutting no corners. You're, you're doing what you have to do. I feel like you stopped focusing on someone. You focused on your security, your stability. Because they already tore down the castle that you was building. They destroyed that castle. They destroyed what you thought you all were building, the, the empire. And so, of course, there was a need to rebuild, to restructure, to rebrand, to reconstruct, to regroup even. But the more you started to heal from this person's transgressions, their mistreatment of you, it tapped you deeper into your spiritual gifts. This is where you started to realize what your love language was. What you required in a relationship, a partnership, aside from what you no longer wished to deal with. And that's what we have. Enough of no love. I know my worth now. Bye. And that's what you did. You cut this person off who had hoes all over the place. Who had fellas all over the place. Because they was buying them things. Getting their hair done when you fellas were like, look, I got to pay the car note, the rent. And you sitting here talking to me about a $900 weave? I don't got that. So she took her ass on Instagram and found somebody who would do it. And you discovered that. But this is the type of energy y'all was dealing with. Superficial. Unable to see beyond their own needs. Very self-centered. Very self-absorbed. Very vain. And I feel like this was somebody who also, that's all they cared about was the coins. or They was money motivated. Do anything for money. Sell their soul for money. Sell they ass for money. Shh. Some of them was doing that. Ooh. And there was a site. I keep forgetting the name of that site because I try not to keep any information in my brain that does not matter to me. But there is a site. You all know the site. I'm not tuned in, tapped into a lot of the stuff people do these days. But I know there's a site where you, you know, you can, um, people could pay to see you in like panties. So it's basically like a peep show. You know what I'm saying? Back in the back in the days 34th street or 40, what was it 34th street 42nd street it was like a whole a whole stroll even in the bronx back in the days on ho avenue you know you had ho avenue then you also had um there was a couple of places in the bronx but it was over there by the highway i can't even remember but it was just like and they even made a documentary and i stumbled upon it the other day but it was talking about you know prostitution and it was this this uh, brother who documented their stories and they had some atrocious just terrible stories but I digress but yeah this is what some people were doing though don't get it twisted you'd be amazed because some of them women out that was out there you you wouldn't even suspect there was nurses that was out there you know when I was watching the documentary some of these people had good paying jobs but they was out there you know prostituting and don't get it twisted. Men do that too. You know. Men be out there. 
They be gigolos for the, you know, for some old lady. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. But uh, let me get off of that topic. <laughs> but I feel like, you know, for most of you all, you definitely discovered your worth and discovered your value. And that's where you said, oh, my love language is completely different than what this person was providing. I can't do this no more. You know, I can't do the disappearing acts, the ghosting, the lack of emotional intelligence. She was dealing with someone who was childish, who thought that, you know, they were, they had some sort of, you know, the sun rose and set on them or something. But there definitely is that same person is the one who is preying on your downfall because they may watch you literally uh, fall into the arms of someone else. You have enough of no love. I know my worth, love, language. So you're falling into alignment, into balance, into home, wholeness, oneness, and harmony because you're starting to focus on yourselves. You're healing yourselves. And this player is very perturbed by that. And that's why we have, I always feel like somebody's watching me because this person's watching you. This is that person that doesn't like to lose. You know, this is that female that you done broke up with, but she's still messaging you and questioning you about who you talking to who was that chick on your page and it's like woman we ain't been together for a year what are you talking about <laughs> what, you know what i'm saying that's it's like stalker it's that crazy i kept telling you i feel i was feeling like you know this that energy of somebody who they they feel like they can do what they want to do but you're supposed to still for some reason be bound and stuck to them it's that if i can't have you nobody can you know and so they watch they stalk this person is very perturbed. They're very disturbed. And I feel like not only are they watching, but they got other people watching you. They probably was like, yo, look at her page. Look at her page. Trying to, you know, because we already had talking uh, because they have lips gossiping ass fools here. So they already got an entourage of folks. They got a whole team of dummies. A whole team of fools, like, working around the clock. And, 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 and these people are just following behind their orders. Meanwhile, you over here living your best life, doing your own thing. But this player is disturbed. This is somebody who literally feels like they can have their cake, eat it too. You shouldn't question what they're doing, when they're doing it. This is like that knight of wands. You know, somebody ruled by their phallus. Or, you know, this is that, you know, that knight of wands who could be feminine energy who uses sex as a weapon. You know, who goes out to the clubs in the most skimpy outfits and to just, you know, lure them in. Just so she could get what she wants. She knows how to play the game. Incubus, succubus energy. I don't know if any of you saw, um, uh, what is that? The American Gods. And uh, of course, you know, um, right in the beginning, they showed that incubus, succubus energy with the woman who would, you know, the men would just, she would just suck them up whole. <laughs> but that's the, the equivalence of what, you know, some of these people was dealing with. You know, and now they mad at you because you've already like you've cut them off. You set up a guard, set up a boundary. You're not falling for the okie doke. You're not dealing with the dumb shit. And so there's this frustration. But I feel like you all are going to find someone. You're going to attract someone that's on the same frequency as you. That does speak the same love language. There's going to be a synergy. There's going to be a chemistry because you've already walked away from someone that was not providing that. And so now that you've set your guard up, there's going to be frustration and aggravation by the person that you've left behind because they're going to sit back and literally watch someone that could be your knight in shining armor or your, you know, your queen. It's going to be somebody that's going to come in and this connection is just going to like y'all are going to be super happy and this player is going to be upset. And they may come back talking about they want to get back together or they want to try to work on the relationship or they, you know, they're going to say some things where your response is going to be like, show me. Because I already told you, y'all ain't listening to words no more. Words don't matter to you. All you care about is the action. All you care about is seeing people actually do the things they say they're going to do. So this person is preying on your downfall and hating on you because they're literally watching you regroup, revamp restructure and rebuild what they destroyed and they don't like that very much they don't <laughs> they don't like that see the, 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 they don't like when they gotta you know swallow the shit they trying to force feed you they can't they can't uh 
they can't, you know, they can't take that dose of medicine. Their stomachs is too, too weak. They too, they too oozy. Their reflexes are bad. <laughs> Apparently. So why is this illusions, delusions, faulty foundation here for who's praying on Scorpio's downfall? Thank you, spirit. And I still have two cards in my hand. So those are going to be some additional messages. See that? So you had to become the alchemist. All of this that was destroyed, not only did you have to heal from it, but you learned to transmute all of that negativity and turning it into something powerful. So a lot of you started to set your intentions. You started to work with source. You started to become prayer warriors, started to call on your angels, your guides, your ancestors. You also realized that you were the conduits of change and that you could utilize all of the elements around you. And so you started to create. You didn't fall into the trap of being a victim. You knew that you had the power to heal. You knew that you had the power to change your circumstance, your situation by changing your mind. Because when you change your mind, you change your reality. And you also realize when you changed your mind that this person had you trapped in an illusion. You started to notice all of the lies. You started to notice all of the deception because you are the waterbender. So this person was emotionally manipulating you. And when you found emotional balance, when you started to ground yourself and you started to transmute that negativity, the hurt, the pain, the, the evil that was being cast upon you, when you started to create your own potions and elixirs to life, this put you in balance. And this also made you like, um, you know, because a lot of you were, you know, praying into the ethers, calling on your angels, calling on your guides. And so in that moment of being the alchemist, because this is very much like that star energy where you are like, you know, you're, you're channeling, you know, and you're transmuting. It's, it's, it's a very beautiful process, but it's also like you're becoming a co-creator with source all in the same. And so in this process of this ending, you still were in a very powerful position, Scorpios, because you didn't allow for that situation to destroy you, to crush you. What you did was you used that opportunity to rise and you started to speak all of those prayers into the ethers. Remember the mantras, Reiki healing card came up. So that's what you all did. You found your, your, your balance. You, you took to you know, that hermit mode stage or into that, that energy of like, you know, literally like learning to uh, ground yourselves and learning to like transmute the evil, the negativity, the hurt, the pain. And here we have, hold on one moment. I heard my kitten under my, but yeah, you're, you're absolutely, you know, because of all of your prayers and petitions, there's definitely some wish fulfillment um, coming in. And remember, we did see bright future infinite supplies. So I feel like your prayers didn't fall on deaf ears. That's why the divine was telling you, look, I see you. I see what you're dealing with. And this is what you was dealing with. The lion asked the truth ain't in you. That's why we have I am an alchemist and I can create the potions and elixirs to life. This is the mantra some of y'all were saying to yourselves. Even though you couldn't see it, you had to fake it until you made it. This could have been the mantra, this could have been the affirmation, the daily affirmation that I am the alchemist and I create the potions and elixirs to life. I am capable, I am beautiful, I am powerful, I am strong. Like you could have been saying all of that because you was literally healing. You was healing from this very toxic person that constantly lied like a rug, just a pathological liar. And so this person was an illusionist, as I said, the lying ass truth thing in you. This is someone who gets off on lying. And they feel it's power. It's like a position of power because, because they're the only ones that they think they're the only ones that know the truth. They continue to, you know, perpetuate the lies because it's a game. It becomes a game. It becomes a game, you know. And so... What we have here is like minds. So this is what, you know, what you all are doing. And then you have keep it moving. So this is what you're doing. You're manifesting someone who's going to be on your frequency, on your vibration, because you don't have no time for the dumb shit. You don't have no time for the games. You don't have no time for the trick knowledge. You don't have time to, to play with children. This is very childish energy. This is someone who gets off on playing manipulative games 
And what you're doing is you're over here busy manifesting someone that you can have a healthy dialogue with, that you can, you know, have this beautiful conversations, deep conversations, someone who has something to add on. And you're going to keep it moving from that past person because you know that they still ain't about nothing. They've been lying through their teeth the whole reading. They still lying. And so while they sitting here lying and resorting to child's play, you're over here manifesting someone that will be on your vibration. Someone that's going to be, you know, also mentally stimulating. Someone that's going to, you know, really, that's going to really stimulate you on multiple levels. Not just sexual, but, you know, mental, you know. That's a requirement for Scorpios because Scorpios are not surface level people. You like to, to delve deep. You like deep conversations. You like to know who the person is and you like to feel like they're not hiding anything. Because if they ask you what's going on, you, you'll, you'll tell them what you want them to know. <laughs> you'll tell them what you want them to know. You catch that? See that? Your ancestors are pleased with y'all. Because y'all have been doing the work. That's why I said the ancestors were like, look, I see you. I see everything you're doing. I see everything you're going through. Keep it pushing. And, and they're the ones the whole way nudging you along, rooting for you, celebrating you in the spirit realm. Your ancestors are pleased and they approve. Whoever's coming in, it's almost as if they are setting you up with this person. They're sending this person in. I was feeling like whoever's coming in, you may not even know this person. You may not know this person. This may be a complete stranger. For some of y'all, you may know this individual. They could be an acquaintance, an old friend. But I feel like a lot of y'all have freed yourselves from some sort of mental trap. And you're no longer confused by it. And when Jay-Z here is 22 twos. 22 twos by Jay-Z from the Reasonable Doubt, Af um, Reasonable Doubt album. So, yeah, I, I feel like a lot of you had reasonable doubt in that partnership because a lot of stuff wasn't adding up. You know, like I said, you would ask them a question and they, huh? If you could, huh, you could hear. So there was just little things that this person could have been doing that was just every time, you know, you just constantly felt like, damn, they li they're a liar. Like, excuse me, they're lying through their teeth. And I feel like that's what the divine is, is, is pre pleased with. Because a lot of you have, you know, you finally saw the light. It's like you had your come to Jesus moment, your come to Buddhist or Buddha moment. You, you, you've just come out of the darkness and into the light, so to speak. So the divine is very, your ancestors are pleased because you, it's almost like you picked up the jewels they was dropping for you, you know. So why is heal, this, um, heal thyself here for who's praying on Scorpio's downfall? So we have, they fear, they feel deeper than they let on. And this is heal thyself, okay. And then we have master your craft, sharpen your sword. Show forgiveness is for you. You have a, a people who are in secret competition with you. Mind your business or keep your business to yourself. And you are unlike anyone I've ever met or dealt with. So automatically with all these cards, I just feel like this, these are the scenarios that you're healing from. And someone may even say like, you know, say these things like, you know, I miss you. I love you. But you have 22 twos um, and the divine, you know, this is from the Reasonable Doubt al um, album. And so that's what really sticks out. Not so much the 22 twos. The 22 twos could represent the six, which is balance. So you're over here healing and finding emotional balance and someone could be trying to come in who's literally in a secret competition, who doesn't want you to find your peace, your joy, your happiness, um, who the divine is telling you like, you know, forgive that person because it's for you. You don't have to walk around with resentment, anger. Um, they may say this like, you know, I feel deeper, you know, than they, they may, you know, they feel deeper than they let on rather, or they may reveal to you that you're unique you're special um but i feel like you know for the most part um you know, yeah they may feel these things but i ultimately feel like you're going to choose yourselves uh because you know at the end of the day you ha you still have reasonable doubt that this person 
is being real, being transparent, because there were so many cards speaking to, you know, lies, deception. Um, and you can't trust someone that that's just, you know, lying through the whole damn reading. So it's like, you know, that's why the Bible's like, look, you can, you know, accept their apology. You can show forgiveness is for you, but ultimately keep it pushing because they ain't about shit. They're not going to change. This is who they are. They're very immature. They don't take accountability and they just want to, you know, attach themselves to you because they know that you're heading someplace. And whatever cho choices, decisions, whatever superficial chicks or guys that they're dealing with, it's not cutting it for them. I feel like they always want to have you on the side, but they still want to do what they want to do. You know, and so we have here, it was all growing pain. So this is the divine telling you like, look, it was meant for you to grow through this, not, you know, to go through this and grow through this and not just stay there, you know, in a relationship or a partnership that was not feeding or nurturing you. So why is this, whatever isn't growing is dead for our beloved Scorpios? Why is whatever isn't growing is dead here for our beloved Scorpios? you on spirit of love and light. Why is whatever isn't growing is dead here? Why is whatever isn't growing is dead? Thank you. Y'all got a lot of messages for these cards. And a shift happens. So you've gone through major changes. Enormous changes. Transformation. And this person realizes that you're special when it's too late. Because all of their games, it caught up to them. They tried to play you and they played themselves. Only to discover how unique, how beautiful. And they may have to watch you literally get with someone else. What did I say? They thought the grass was greener on the other side. And they didn't choose wisely because whoever they chose didn't stick around for them. They met a shadow version of themselves. They met a reflection of who they were. So when you're operating and functioning from a low vibration and you go out there looking for something, you're going to meet somebody that's on the same wavelength as you. That's why the divine said earlier, you attract what you are, mind your energy. You know, you teach people how to treat you, mind your energy, you know, be your authentic self. So let's get a couple of tarot messages. So some of y'all could have been dealing with a fire sign. And this fire sign has a wandering eye. You know, they didn't realize the prize they had. I feel like a lot of y'all started to be more selfless, um, selfish with your time and your energy. You definitely, they're realizing that you are, you know, wish fulfillment. This just flew out. So a lot of y'all are definitely focused on loving yourselves. You got the nine of cups all by yourself. So you're already in emotional equilibrium balance. And I feel like that's what you're doing. You're choosing you. You're not choosing a partnership that was not fulfilling you, sustaining you, making you feel appreciated, valued, or any um, of the sort. I feel like many of you are making, you know, that decision. You've made a decision to choose yourselves. Whatever confusion, whatever fear had you trapped or stuck, I feel like you're, you're listening and trusting your intuition now. Because you're not going to be caught in any silical rides. See that? I feel like this also could represent your person, you know, someone who was trying to make a decision between you, trying to make a decision between someone else. There was some indecision here, stuck. They was courting other women. And the way these two people, they look very, um, you know, it's like shadow. So it's like this person definitely met a shadow version of themselves. And I feel like you see these ancestors, like the ancestors are watching, you know, this person court other women, date other women. They're making time for other people, but not for the main woman or the main man. And so, yeah, this was someone who was doing all of this, even though they had a family, even though they had someone that they were living with, planting seeds or roots with, and you cleaned house. You ended that partnership. You released that person because you discovered they were lying. See that? Discovered they were lying. There goes the tower. So whatever was hidden in the dark came out in the light. And it's, it's just, you know, see this magnifying glass? It's like everything on the outside seemed to be perfect to everyone else. But there was a lot of lies, deception, trickery, gaslighting. This person was definitely immature, you know. And they, and they lost a good thing by playing games. But I do feel like with the grandfather children, they do recognize you now as a star. Maybe some of you all, like I said, maybe you all are entrepreneurs. You're working on you know, mastering some of your skills, you're growing a business, a brand. I also feel like, you know, many of you have been remaining hopeful, even though things seemed very daunting. And you walked away, you mustered up the courage to walk away. This is the epitome of self love makes you more attractive. This person definitely had you feeling emotionally bankrupt to the point where you said it's the end, it's done, done. And so many of you focused on healing, focused on clean, clearing and cleansing yourselves. 
transmuting the negativity, the pain, the hurt. The grandfather is the star card. This eight of cups wanted to fly out. So that's exactly what this is, looking for that happily ever after. So you walked away from someone who you knew was not filling your cup. You was filling theirs, they weren't filling yours. It wasn't a, really, a reciprocal relationship, nor was it balanced. There was a lot of tricknology. There was a lot of gaslighting, and I feel like you cut this person off and cleared your energy for once and for all. Many of you have wish fulfillment coming in. We're about to clarify the I see you and the synchronicity cards, angel numbers. So many of you have been praying, wishing, hoping, manifesting new love, calling upon a new love. And I feel like with this song playing now is called Focus. So you stayed focused on what you wanted, your, your prayers, your dreams. So definitely you stayed focused on what you wanted. You didn't get sidetracked. You didn't let this person bamboozle you. So Divine Spirit, why is I see you here? So we have here five of coins. So see that? You received a lot of downloads, you know, about someone who may have abandoned you. I feel like your angels and guides protected you, though, because you felt, like, devalued. It was like you were just out, left out in the cold, abandoned, mistreated. Someone definitely chose someone else because we did see the grass wasn't greener on the other side. This could be for some of you all. Someone had mommy-daddy issues. I also feel like for some of you all, this could be the mother or the father to your child. But someone definitely chose um, other options over you. And I feel like, you know, you were left to feel abandoned. But I do feel like, you know, you saw something clear as day. You know why someone abandoned you too. And now there's someone trying to manifest, trying to bring you back. But I feel like you're focused on whatever it is you're working on. You're focused on your building, focused on your children. Just focused on being a better version of yourselves. Focused on being happy. You know, because you spent a lot of time in a relationship that literally did not, it didn't, the outcome wasn't what you were anticipating or expecting. It was like when you thought of that relationship, a lot of you all thought that y'all was going to grow old together and this was going to be the person that you were going to be with forever and it just didn't happen that way. But I feel like even though y'all were abandoned, even though y'all were left out in the cold, I do feel like y'all still stayed resilient. You persevered through some of those difficulties because your angels and guides were giving you signs, synchronicities, which kept you, you know, resilient, which kept you focused on, you know, continuing the course. And as I said, for many of you all, y'all didn't know how you made it through. And it was because your ancestors, they were holding you up. They were, they were carrying you through a lot of that mess. A lot of that pain, I should say. You're making a judgment call. You're choosing a new beginning. You're choosing a new path. You're choosing joy and happiness. Why is this healer shaman light worker card here? And someone's going to be pissed because you ain't going to choose them. And so we got the daughter of coins. So this is absolutely someone trying to hold on to you. This is also someone watching you like kind of live in your best life. You know, some of y'all are like... Maybe some of you all are, you know, spending more time with family, you know, you're, you're socializing more, you're around loved ones. Maybe some of y'all are really just focused on growing, you know, a business, you're really working on your crafts. There's definitely someone spying, watching, being forced to look at things from a different perspective. This is the hangman. And with this compass on their eye, um, on their for first eye. I feel like, you know, they're, they're absolutely like looking at things from different angles, different perspectives. Someone who's, you know, a little jelly. They're watching you from a distance. And I feel like they're also, you know, going to be forced to watch you have some sort of success. Because you've been investing in your dreams now. You're no longer investing in that partnership. So now you have more time to invest in the things that you desire. You're spending time with like minds also. You're attracting like-minded individuals, other people. You're in, you know, circles. You're, you're, you know, positioning yourselves around people who are on the same frequency and vibration. And we have um, Miss Wonderful by Chico DeBarge playing. So this person admires you, you know. And, you know, like I said, you know, hater is just a secret admirer. So they see you, you, they know that you're Miss Wonderful, but for whatever reason, they are very deceptive, you know. 
So we have a card that flew out. See that? So this is the end of the, the karmic cycle. This is, you know, the wheel turning. So there's a turning point. Things are coming full circle. This is the wheel of fortune and it's clarifying the illusion. So there's absolutely the end of a cycle. And you're moving forward. Some new things are coming in. Blessings. There's rewards. There's recognition. There's wish fulfillment. I feel like there's absolutely going to be, um, you know, whatever you've been manifesting with this. I am an alchemist. It is materializing. And I feel like it's coming in the form of not only financial, um, you know, something financially, you know, content, but it's also emotional content because we have the like minds here. So I feel more people are going to start entering into your life that are on your frequency, your wavelength and your vibration. And this is a part of your karma. So you're getting your just due is what I'm hearing. And I feel like while you're getting your just due, this this ex, this person that's hating and preying on your downfall is also getting a dose of karma for all of their misdeeds, for all of the lies and the trickery. And that's why they're watching you with evil eyes, because, you know, they're trying to fault you and blame you for their lives being jacked up. But, you know, we all reap what we sow and the seeds that they sowed, you know, the seeds that they have uh yeah, the seeds they sowed, they're going to have to pay for it tenfold. You know, that's just the laws of karma. It's universal law. But I also feel like, you know, this is the, you know, the, the dissolution of a marriage. So if some of you were still in a marriage, if some of y'all were still, you know, waiting for the procedure, you know, for a, a, a divorce to be finalized, I feel like that's, you know, that's coming. But I am feeling like, you know, there is wish fulfillment here. There is, you know, some good news. There's something, some good things coming in for you. And I do feel like it's, you know, it's leading to abundance. It has something to do with your finances, your career, a business. I see things taking off. And I feel like it's because you cut out a lot of the fat, a lot of the dead weight. That's the death card, the ancestors. So your ancestors are absolutely like approving some sort of move you're making, approving some sort of action you're taking. And it's because you finally saw someone for who they were. And now you can, you know, take appropriate action. Now you can do what's best for you, which is to move on, keep it moving. Because you discovered someone is in about shit. Because right on down to the end of the reading, you're still seeing the lion ass. And these cards were showing up during the pre-shuffle and they blew out of the deck. So why is heal that self here for who's praying on Scorpio's downfall? Why is heal that self here for who's praying on Scorpio's downfall? Thank you, spirit. See that? You're healing yourself from someone's deception and lies and trickery. This is also a childish energy. You know, the son of knives is like very childish they speak without thinking and they also gossip and lie and try to turn people against you they smudge and run smear campaigns just very immature and this is someone who wants to win at all costs and this is someone who's also very disturbed by how strong you are they're also frustrated because you took your power back you know your worth and value you're standing your ground you're speaking your truth you're not under any illusion anymore and you've been healing. And you've been protecting yourself. And you've been growing. And you've been evolving. And you've turned your pain into power. And so this is what is distracting to this person. And it's because you've learned to, you know, when you heal yourself, you begin to know yourself. You begin to love yourself. When you love yourself, you know, then you, you, you absolutely demand what you desire. You demand what you require, rather, because you know your love language and you're not going to let somebody come around talking reckless or talking circles. This is immaturity. This is what this is who had you under the illusion. Look at this foolish child. This is tricknology. This is like somebody who don't have nothing better to do. They just talking. And so while they were sitting around talking, running their mouth, you was over here mastering, you know, mastering your crafts building your brand, growing, you know what I'm saying, your empire, healing yourselves, improving yourselves. So why is whatever isn't uh, growing is dead? 
Draco who's praying and hating on Scorpio's downfall. See that? You set your boundary. You moved away. And you unburdened yourself. This is someone with whom wasn't, you know, they weren't planting any seeds with you. See that? And you spotted them. You was like, look, I know what love feels like. And this does not feel like love. This feels like I'm taking care of you and carrying your ass on my back. You was carrying their load. They wasn't even carrying their own load. You was carrying all of them. And this is what you got tired of. You gave this person chance after chance to prove, you know, that there was love. That there was, you know, a sincere concern or even desire to to make the relationship work and when you realize they didn't have no interest then you 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 moved on you moved away some of y'all created space like i said a lot of y'all you know emotionally you you may have um you may have cut this person off like literally just like you know completely cut them off energetically i should say but many of you you know created a safe space you could have moved to a whole new town and started over a fresh or new but you absolutely um, have your guard up. This is the Nine of Wands. And she says, which is better protection, God or guns? So you're willing to defend yours to the death. Whatever isn't growing is dead. You invested enough time and energy. This Nine of Wands shows all that you was investing. And you made it all the way to the Ten of Wands, which is the end. The highest number of change. This is when you changed your perspective on the situation. Saw this person for who they were. And you created the space. You set up the boundaries, but this Ten of Wands is you saying, I'm done. That Ten of Wands reduces to the Ace, so you now focused on a new beginning. And the Son of Sticks, still in this childish, boyish energy, is going to try to come in with a message. And that's why we had that, you know, uh, reasonable doubt playing, because I feel like you're going to have to, you know, pay attention to people's words. Uh, I mean, pay attention to people's actions and not their words. Because there's reason to doubt what this person is saying to you. So let's go ahead and clarify these messages. And then we'll shut the reading down. Because this is a deep dive. Y'all know I like the deep dive. I'm going to try to get it done before um, 2. So we have the 6 of Wands. So many of you have moved on, moved away. You're celebrating. There's a lot of celebration or victory surrounding you. And I feel like this person is definitely trying to trap you they don't have good intentions they see that you're heading somewhere they see that you have you know this contentment and they're trying to you know come in and and this is you know why they said make your next move your best move because this person don't you see like they look like they're kind of trying to convince them to come with them like come with me i can show you the way and he's like what you know i'm headed somewhere else beloved but let's clarify these messages Let's get a couple of shuffles. Uh-oh, what's going on? Oh, this is turned the wrong way. Okay, there we go. All right, there we go. I had to get it together. You know, I am very petty when it comes to my cards. Very anal. All right, so Divine Spirit. I saw some cards in the upright. Goodness, what is happening? There's a couple of cards in the uprights. Why are these cards in the upright? What is happening, man? I would stop the video, but... This is so crazy. You gotta be kidding me. Got to be kidding me. I don't even know how this happened. I know my son had my cards, so this definitely looks like us. Uh, uh, my son's doing. All right. All right. Now we finally can do this. So what's on the bottom of the deck? We got the two of cups. So you definitely are calling in a spiritual soulmate a spiritual union especially with that nine of uh, baskets here i feel like you are you know you have someone coming in so why is the nine of baskets here for who's praying on scorpio's downfall and why 
So I'm going to just take these cards and spread them out because it's too many uh, to, um, you know, do just for one of the cards. So we have the two of swords here. So you made a decision to choose yourselves, listen to your intuition. You're definitely being more selfish uh, with your time, your energy, your look, fact, you're practicing like healthy self-care. You got the nine of baskets all on your own. All you need is one more basket and there's that emotional fulfillment. That's that, uh, you know, that contentment, that happiness, that joy. But I feel like a lot of you are elated all on your own. You've learned to love yourselves. You've learned to protect yourselves, to heal yourself. You learn to take care of yourselves emotionally. And that's why you walked away. So we have this uh, queen of chalices here. So this is your energy. This is the queen energy. You walked away because you started to realize like if someone wasn't filling up your cup, then you could do that all on your own. You didn't need to stay in no partnership where you was getting the bare minimums or where there was no reciprocity. So this queen of cups is like you, you know, learning to heal, you know, you releasing someone who didn't want to be there. You know, maybe someone, like I said, moved out of the house. This is someone that you could have said, like, look, you know, you ain't you're not filling my cup. You're not giving me what I need. And so you could have, you know, simply said, look, you, you got to go, you know, either you got to go or I'm a go. But somebody got to go because this isn't working. And so I feel like for a long time, you know, this person had you trapped in some sort of illusion. But I feel like now you know your worth, you know your value, and you're looking for somebody that is going to, you know, invest just as much. Someone who's going to be emotionally intelligent, someone who's going to fill your cup. This definitely speaks to, you know, self-love makes you more attractive. So this could be your energy, as I said, where you just kind of separated or walked away from a connection that wasn't working for you or serving your highest good. We have the knave of pentacles. So this is showing, you know, like someone was taking, you know, and investing elsewhere. Um, they did not choose to invest in you. They may have abandoned you and they didn't put in the time and the effort in this partnership. And so I feel like for a lot of you, you started to, you know, take those seeds and you started to plant your seeds elsewhere. And I feel like you're going to start reaping what you sow because you've turned some sort of thought into reality. It's like this is you working on something. Uh, this is you like planting a seed and really, you know, growing and evolving and, um, you know, really in a studious energy. So this is the epitome of what doesn't kill you makes you stronger because you had the protection surrounding you by your ancestors. And so this is you like believing in your dream, believing in, in you know, in your dreams, hopes and desires because you were receiving the downloads. So why is this uh, daughter of coins? Thank you, spirit. So we have the Hierophant. So there was a commitment and someone did not invest. Someone did not see the value. Um, someone may have felt like you all had a lot of differences. Maybe spirituality played a factor, age, ethnic background, or maybe someone was just simply immature and did not, you know, feel the need to, uh, you know, they didn't feel, you know, com you know, they were like the non-committal type. Maybe they were listening to a lot of dedunt you know, you know, kind of, telling them, you know, all the reasons why this relationship wasn't healthy or all the reasons why this relationship wouldn't work. Um, but I do feel like, you know, ultimately uh, with this evil eye here watching and then we're about to clarify uh, the healer, shaman, light worker, and I always feel like somebody's watching me. There's definitely still some spines. So there could be someone who the divine is bringing in whom you know. I feel like because there's a book here, this means like you know this person. There's some sort of emotional um pull to someone someone's learning you someone's watching you someone's studying you because all of these eyes aren't necessarily evil some of them you know could potentially just be trying to study someone trying to check the temperature trying to gauge uh how to come in um but they do see that you are preoccupied um you know with with your coins you know with your mind on your money rather um and you're also busy healing you know a lot of you could be practitioners, you could be healers, shamans, light workers, you could be Reiki healers, as I said. But I feel like this is someone the divine is sending into you because this is a part of your karma dharma. So there is someone new love because you've done your healing. That's why you have this ace of cups. And remember, you already had the nine. So this is someone coming in to fill your cup, to be emotionally fulfilling. And I feel like this is wish fulfillment for you. Someone that you've prayed for, wish for, hope for. So why is this um, Aunt Caroline? line here okay 
there's a card upright. So Aunt Caroline is here because you was dealing with a fuck boy, fuck girl, someone in and out. The Knight of Wands is definitely the player player from the Himalayas. This could be female or male. This is that attention whore, that superficial person who's in, out, ghosting. You know what I'm saying? Tricknology, playing games, uh, gift the gabber, gaslighter, someone who will just talk because they have lips. This is a very impulsive energy, someone who's ruled by their phallus, someone who uses sex as a weapon, someone who is like literally gets stuck in that incubus succubus energy i feel like it's the end of a chapter this was a karmic relationship karmic lesson you had to learn your worth and value you had to move away from that energy and now this person is resorting to watching you because you've severed the ties and you've been healing from that you now have the ace of pentacles so this is what you're re receiving the reward because of all that you've learned the lessons you've gained i feel like with this archway which speaks to you all becoming the um <clears throat> excuse me you all have become like oh my god it's on the tip of my tongue you all are also uh healers shamans light workers i feel like you all have become um initiated that's the word i was looking for you are initiates to the practice so you grounding yourselves healing yourselves you've mastering your crafts you've learned to become practical grounded reliable resourceful you're very domestic and there's a new financial beginning abundance you have the ace of cups so new love is coming in and you also have the ace of pentacles and this is why someone is salty as hell lying gaslighting talking ish and remember we had the a alike b alike along um, with the um, uh, the lion ass, the truth ain't in you. So the A like, B like is what you're manifesting. You're manifesting someone who's also grounded, someone who's going to put in the time, the energy, the effort, invest, long-term commitment, someone who's willing to grow a family, build a family, but this also could represent you just having your coins, all of the mind on my money, money on my mind as you manifesting like financial freedom for yourself, some lucrative business uh, deals, you growing your brand and, you know, things are thriving financially. Um, so that's what you have. And this is why someone's frustrated because they thought that, you know, when they... You know, when the relationship broke up, they may have thought that you was going to fail, crash, burn. You wasn't going to be able to survive without them. And you're doing so much better with them. I mean, you're doing so much better without them in the picture. So why is this son of knives here? Who's praying on Scorpio's downfall and why? Why is this person praying on Scorpio's downfall? And this person's praying on your downfall because they see that you have some sort of stability and that someone is coming in that's going to be a support system. You see how this person is encouraging them like you can do it keep going and they're together though they're working together there is no illusion so this person is going to be really perturbed you've cut this person off so they're really salty you feel you figured out who this illusionist was you figured out their tricknology their games um you also realize and this was someone that you could have been um yeah see this we got a alike b alike and then we got the four wands so this is a suit this is a match. I feel like this person is going to be real frustrated because many of you are uh, coming into alignment with someone who's on the same wavelength frequency, someone that speaks your love language, um, and you're getting rid of some sort of immature energy. I feel like a lot of you have um, become that queen of swords, so you're no longer uh, thinking solely from an emotional um, position you're thinking more logically uh, and I feel like you and someone are going to have some really dope conversations as I said with the A like B like both of these swords are up so I feel like you and this person are going to be like up to the wee hours of the a.m. having conversation and someone is going to be stalking and watching you from a distance watching you develop some real you know healthy connection with someone uh, this four of wands so this is going to be like very stable and this is really going to frustrate someone to the point where they might try to come in and break this up um, with the ten of wands yeah this is what you were carrying and now you've released it so this person is now you know trying to figure out how to sustain or survive without you um, and they may try to see that remember I was telling you somebody gonna try back you know come back and try to trick you, you see how she's giving them the hand like please get out of here with all of that so this person is trying to to study you trying to learn what to say to come in but they talking because they have lips right they just saying whatever they think is going to gaslight you remember the divine said keep it moving they ain't about shit so they're letting you know if somebody comes back with some petty offer or somebody comes back trying to trick you get you caught up trapped up again 
just wave them off like she is and say peace be unto you i'm good you 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 know what i'm saying i'm good beloved because look at this face this is a demon you know this is a demon and remember those evil eyes watching so this person is watching you and trying to gauge how to come in trying to gauge what to say trying to check your temperature trying to see you know how to formulate some sort of offer we have the king of chalices so they're absolutely salty and frustrated because you have someone coming in who absolutely loves you you may have multiple suitors you're going to have a lot of offers coming in because the king of swords the king of cups so someone is going to shower you with with love and we do have um we have oops i'm sorry and who is this playing we have they want effects so this person does want effects they want they want to get some sort of reaction from you this is dos effects so this person's trying to get some sort of reaction um and that's why the divine was telling you like keep it moving because all this person's trying to do is slow you down and they're trying to block this new person that's coming in that's coming in with the right intentions uh because they're going to see that you and this person have some sort of synergy some sort of chemistry some sort of connection and that's going to really disturb them and so they're going to try to resort again to lying trickery because they don't want no one else to have you guys um and so we have the uh knight of swords so this knight of swords as we know they try to win at all costs and they will lie but you're ready you know which is better protection god of guns you don't gave that person chance after chance time and time again and you ain't with the okie doke no more so whatever lies trickery they coming in with you already ready for them you got your gun ready ready to blaze you ain't with it so why is the um why is the uh heal thyself here why is heal thyself here or why is the nine of sticks, the six of knives, and the ten of sticks here for whatever isn't growing is dead, rather? And this is temperance. This is temper, temper. Good things take time to create. Patience is also a form of action. So I feel like for a lot of you, you had to do your own work. You had to find your balance. You had to ground yourself. I feel like there was a lot of imbalance. You gave this person chance after chance, and you change your perspective, change this, you know, the way you looked at this person, and also realize like this wasn't serving your highest good. You have the Knight of Chalices, so there was a lot of emotional manipulation, um, and that's why you stayed as as long as you did, um, and why you tried as much as you did, because you really loved that individual, and so. We have the five of um, swords here. So this person is all up in their head. I feel like they had you, you know, trapped in yours for a while until you finally freed yourself. You freed your mind, you know, and you let you, you, you know, that was the get free song that was playing by Tedra Moses. So I do feel like, you know, you realize like, OK, it's all trick knowledge. This is all games. Um, this person definitely uh, was toying with your feelings. It was there was definitely a lot of. Um, there was a lot of people gunning for this person's attention. Um, also, a lot of people who, you know, like I said, is watching you, watching this connection, you know, doing this person's dirty work. Um, but I feel like this person also needs to listen to their intuition when it comes to this connection, because I feel like they let a lot of people get in their head and they don't trust their own intuition. And that's why now they're figuring out too late, you know, that... Um, you know, no one else in this world sees them as you and that, you know, there, there was some level of toxicity, whether they drank too much, smoked too much, whatever they did in excess, um, you know, in excess is, you know, is the reason why now, um, you know, you, you moved away. You had to move away from this situation because look how negative that is. You know, this, this is not anything anyone wants to be tangled in. And you realize whatever isn't growing is dead. So this person was just growing more out of control with the way that they saw things. They had third parties everywhere, you know, cheating on you from behind the scenes, um, you know, maybe with someone they worked with. But we see here this demon. So it was like, you know, they were they were definitely dealing with a lot of of deception. And I feel like, you know, they had they have to confront their demons. You know, they have to confront them instead of running from the demons. They need to turn around and confront them because it's all a state of mind. The swords deals with the mental. And so I feel like this person definitely did not listen to their intuition and they would let other people influence them and negatively um, be impressionable. So why is this ten of sticks here for whatever's in growing is dead and the hangman? See that? So this person feels stupid because they see things clearly. And I feel like you also realize, you know, um, that, you know, the situation was done. 
Um, you saw everything you needed to see. You learned from this person. As I said, I feel like someone definitely was drinking a lot. And this is probably why they resorted to a lot of toxic behavior. Um, some of them could be depressed to the point of uh, suicidal ideation. Um, we have the Eight of Swords, so there is mental entrapment here. But this is self-imposed. I also feel like for a lot of you, um, you may have people who are uh, attempting to, you know, throw things at you to do some sort of voodoo, hoodoo, juju. Maybe this person is under some sort of mental, you know, some sort of spell work by whoever they were dealing with. But they're realizing, you know, that you perhaps you, you know, you are the light. You are that, you know, that 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 bright light in their life because things look very grim. You know, this hangman, you know, the way he's hanging is like he's hanging himself by the neck. And the hangman showed up during the pre-shuffle from the Hoodoo Tarot deck. Let me get one more message. Why is this hangman here? But I do feel like this person knows that they, you know, they played themselves. You know, that they, 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 they you know, caused the demise of this partnership. They're the reason why, you know. But they're, they're taking onus because now things are very clear. And so the same card came. Oh, we, the Three of Swords. See that? They're heartbroken now. They're heartbroken. Got the Three of Swords, the Knight of Swords. So they're heartbroken because they know that they did a lot to um, destroy the sanctity of this union. They also know that they was telling lies. They was gossiping. They was doing a lot of things um, impulsively. And I feel like, you know, all of their lies and trickery is going to definitely um, catch up to them. We got the Seven of Swords. And you see how he's like resting with this gun on his nightstand. And then there's this person sneaking in, this demon sneaking in. So there was a lot of deception. And these things are now starting to come out. Maybe they're starting to recognize because they're being forced to uh, reflect back on their past transgress transgressions and how they broke your heart. And now you hear, look how your body language is. You're not bothered anymore because you've already taken the time to rest, recuperate, calibrate. And so all these people gaslighting, talking shit behind your back. You're unbothered. Look at the body language. Arms crossed. You're not letting them in. You're letting your angels deal with all of the hate. You know, but you know these people are watching you. You already know you're prepared. And this person here now is sleeping with a guilty conscience can't rest on a guilty conscience they're very paranoid that certain things are going to come to light the people that they were trusting of they realized they were snakes so it's like like i said earlier this person was dealing in their shadow side and they attracted someone else who was also in their shadow side but this is your reading beloved scorpios i do see where you all are coming into the new new because you've paid attention to you know the spiritual uh guides that your angels your nudges rather that your angels and your ancestors were leaving for you and i feel like there's abundance coming in this prosperity success i do see that there's a lot of hatred jealousy so keep your business to yourself definitely don't share too much definitely don't put too much online uh and also like privatize your accounts you don't need people just browsing through your pictures downloading those pictures and doing doing some type of you know who do voodoo uh so just be mindful protect your peace do your spiritual baths wear your spiritual amulets jewelry and um definitely stay prayed up because you do have a lot of people who have you on the brain like i said they wake up and they tune into your channel whether that be social media youtube uh even if they just pick pulling up old photos of you on their phone but there is someone who is very preoccupied with thoughts of you and they're feeling regret and remorse because i feel like you have emotionally mentally and even some of y'all physically moved away from these individuals but i also feel like you know because you've cut that karma cord because you've broken those generational curses that you now have new love coming in you have attracted someone who's going to like stimulate you mentally also you've attracted someone that speaks the same love language someone emotionally intelligent and they're going to be very like you know, there's going to be a lot of chemistry. There's going to be a lot of joy um, that comes into this. I feel like it's because you found the joy within yourselves and you found your happiness within yourselves. Because when you love yourself, then you attract love. You know, self-love makes you more attractive. And I feel like by you walking away from what wasn't serving you, that, you know, really raised your vibration. And I feel like that's ultimately 
why this person, this past person or these people, these haters are perturbed because you've definitely uh, cleared them out of your energetic space. But this is your reading, beloved Scorpios. This was a deep dive. You know how I do. I thank you all for tuning in, tapping in. I want to send love and light to each and every one of you who are new. If you found that the reading resonated, definitely hit the like, the share, the subscribe. Also hit the bell notification so that you know whenever I upload. And if you are returning, beloved, you already know what it is. Love is love is love is love. And thank you so much to all of you who donate. I want to send a major shout out to Marcus. I want to send a major shout out to Lisa. I want to send a major shout out to Sandra, to Alicia. You all are beautiful. I thank you so much for your donations. I appreciate it. I do this because I love it. Um, you know, I don't do personal readings. I know I get a lot of requests for those. I don't know. I'm still like you know on the fence about that because i like to do things when i'm instructed by my ancestors to do so they have not given me no green light to do any personal readings so i will keep them general for now but i do thank you all for just being interested in doing that you know interested in getting a reading but um i digress let me let you guys go it's been two hours i love you guys peace love and light